Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, kick your feet up, subscribe to this family friendly channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name so you don't miss the sneak peeks of what's coming up next. In this video, it's Yana Fix My Life, Taking Care of Business, Losing in Love. I give a full episode recap with photos offset to the side and then I give my review at the end. No need to dig around, I have all of the minute marks in the comments. It's all coming up next. This story asks a simple question. Why can't I have what I want? Sometimes we want something believing that we don't have it, not realizing we are it. Then, we make excuses to blame someone or something else for our seemingly inability to get what we say we want. In the worst case scenario, we give up, giving into the belief that, because we don't know how to get it, we can't have it. Miss Shanika wrote me because like so many black women, she and her friends thrive in their professional lives but struggle in romantic relationships. To begin the process, I'm asking each of them to pick a role they most identify with. I have some possibilities laid out for you. Which one would you choose as the greatest representation and demonstration of who you are? Shanika chooses the power broker. Now she must choose an envelope and pick up the wig that's on the table of choice. Now think about it. Is that who you are in relationships? Shanika agrees, unfortunately, that that role in relationships shows up as well. Now Erin must choose a role. She selects the media mogul. Crystal selects boss lady and so does Tracy. They all confirm for Iyala that they're all in the radio or media entertainment industry. I'm letting you all know right now, it's not for television. This is about your healing, about your growth, and it's not about you. It's for the hundreds of thousands of women who won't get to sit in a room like this with someone like me. I really encourage you all to be fully present. So, why are you here? Shanika explains that she's tired of making the same mistakes. She keeps ending up in the same relationship. And I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. Now that sounds like a very rehearsed answer, Shanika. Why are you here? Close your eyes and repeat and complete this for me. The reason I am here is because... The reason I am here is because I'm tired of being used and lost in what I'm doing wrong. Erin says that she's there because she actually wants to take accountability for her actions, but doesn't know how. Crystal says, I'm here because I fail at relationships. I feel like I failed and I don't know how to stop. Tracy explains that I'm here because I've never been in a healthy relationship. Someone who really loves me unconditionally. Other than my son, I haven't felt unconditional love from anyone, not even my mother, not even from myself. So what everybody needs to understand is that even though we may have everything together with the wigs and the braids, but underneath the hair is fuzzy, the wig has holes in it. For us women, we have different pieces because why not only do you have boss lady, but you have the word diva and you have things associated with it. She holds up a card that says the B word, but explains that the B word is demanding and she's a man eater. There's an energy that comes with this. And the poor men, they can't handle it. They don't know what to do with this. You put four of these in a room and everyone's a hot mess. And think about it. We expect for a man to manage this? Really? Define relationship for me. Erin has never seen her mother in a relationship. Never. While Tracy saw her mother with a lot of men in different relationships. 
Erin feels that she never saw a couple she wanted to be like, but she always saw the ones she didn't want to be like. Shanika, on the other hand, is very quiet and off to the side, but Iyanla notices. Iyanla explains that I'm here because I love you all, for who you are as a black woman, and I love us. I love the power we bring. I always say that I'm not my sister's keeper, I am my sister. So I'm here because you are who you are. When I go out into the world, I'm speaking from my grandmother, the Teslaki native, the Cherokee, who cleaned toilets and cooked food so I could have a roof over my head. I'm here for Maya Angelou, Ruby Dee, Della Reese, and I'm here for all powerful black women in this industry that came before me. I'm being here for Oprah Winfrey, so I have to make it sure that I'm here and I show up, and who would I be and who I become speaks to their sacrifice. I didn't have to sacrifice, they did for me. Can you hear me? So that's why I'm here. I'm going to rearrange you all in age order. They rearrange with Aaron being the youngest. When the younger look up to you, what do you think they see? I'm not talking about status, I'm talking about who you are. As an example, what do you see when you look at me? That's how we must walk as women. Now I'll send you to go with another coach and she's gonna give you some work to do. Iyama wants to start with Shainika individually to find out why she's guarding her heart. She notices how quiet she is and how vocal everybody else was when speaking of relationships. While growing up, she explains that her parents were married and moved to Georgia for a better life. Once their careers took off, the marriage just fell apart. And in her relationship, she noticed that things seemed to go the same way, that she has a successful relationship, and then when things get busy with work, everything falls apart. This place notion in her mind that when things start to develop in your career, it's highly likely that the relationship will fall apart as well. Shanika was in a relationship for seven years, and within that first year, they were engaged. He had a son, and when they got together, he was about the age of 10 years old. She really didn't want children, even though she took the role as mom. She grew up always being a caretaker of her other siblings, and as she got older, she really just decided that children wasn't something she had an interest in. But Iyama says, Shanika, if you didn't want that role as a mom, why did you do it? Who are you as a woman who does what she wants in business, but you can't say what you want in your life? She explains that that's a really good question and I fell in love and I thought that I was making a sacrifice and I love to help others. Iyana says, write this down. Who am I when I am sacrificing myself for somebody else? You're telling one person that you're a power broker. <laughs> that's taking advantage of someone. That sacrificing yourself for their happiness. What kind of power is that? So who are you in that relationship? <laughs> Shanika says, I guess I was a floor mat. They broke up about two years ago. So the relationship has been over for a while. And she's still been sad and she loves him. Iyanla stresses that when have you taken a moment to mourn that relationship? The love you sacrifice for, the love you settle for, the love that asked you to do these things that you didn't want to do? You have to think about that. She had a breakdown not too long ago and Shanika's not proud of that. She noticed that everyone around her couldn't be there for her in her time of need. She wants everybody to make it known that she should be appreciated and when she does, it seems like people have a problem with that. That additional stress and role brought on the things that a mother would do. Caretaker, enabler, someone that's intuitive, open. And those are the things that she didn't want. There's the narration. 
With each role chosen, there also comes a time where you have to show the world who you really are. What you present to the world, whether it's true or not, is what they see. Shanika has chosen the role of power broker for this exercise. But in the envelope on the back of the card, Iyama explains how certain characteristics can go along with that, such as petty, needy, attached, combative. So that's what we have to clean up. Not relationship, but what you contribute to it. Iyama narrates, even though I just met Miss Tracy, I know she has emotional baggage and has never seen a healthy relationship. Like Shinika, she's created an alternative identity for herself, the boss lady. Her wig's personality name is Marcia. She's bossy, self-sufficient, feisty, a bit of a workaholic, and a doer. So that's Marcia, but who are you? Well, Iyanla, she's trying to find herself. When my mom's relationship ended, I saw my mom fall apart, and I didn't want that. I do the most with my son because I just never got that as a kid, the hugs and the kisses. Iyanla explains that when you don't communicate your emotions in such a life-changing event, that changes into an act of violence, emotional violence. You have to communicate with parents, with people that you know, with people that you care for, that anything that's happened that's had an emotional effect on you, holding that in is not a good thing. Tracy says, well, I've never had that conversation with my mom about it. My grandmother either thinks that she did. The last relationship, I just, he cheated on me with the stripper. And I didn't say anything after that. I just threw his clothes out and that was it. I avoid talking about certain things because my first instinct is to fight with men, women, full out fist fighting. I've even been jumped. So Tracy, what I need you to understand is if your mother didn't learn how to communicate, if your grandmother didn't learn how to communicate, then what makes you think that you would learn how to do so? Your physical violence translates in everything in your life you can't control yourself or manage yourself so with that anger showing up how do you expect that to be in a relationship is your anger showing up with your child and she shares a story about how yeah it showed up one day when i thought i was protecting my child my son and i were walking and a woman almost hit him with her car i got upset I hunted the lady down and even proceeded to kick the side of her car. It was just uncontrollable. She says, you know, your behavior makes others feel like they maybe can't approach or talk to you. Now Iyanla speaks with Crystal. She talks about her love story. After her divorce, her energy just went all into her work. She was married for 11 years. She grew up with a very strict religious household. And when she lost her job and suffered from cervical cancer, fear and everything else tore her apart. Not being able to fix something caused a breakdown. And there was this pressure of always being perfect. On the back of her card, it reads controlling, insecure, intimidating, high maintenance, striving for perfection, hiding, who you really are. Crystal doesn't want to continue to push people away and she wants to just be herself. So this is something that Crystal must conquer and learn about herself before thinking about a relationship. With Erin, her last relationship lasted two years and after a while, the gentleman's true colors started to come out. For a period of time, her lease ended and so he offered her to move in with him. She knew it was a bad idea, but she was at a time where she really needed help. He would have tantrums when she wouldn't agree or do what he wanted to do. And when she didn't, he threw tantrums several times telling her that if she didn't like it, she could get out and leave. But then he would beg her to come back because he was lonely and she was lonely as well. So this was a sign of control, 
It was static also between her and her mother. Her mother had her at the age of 15, so she really didn't feel like she could go to her mother about certain things. On the back of her media mogul label card, it reads, unauthentic, fraudulent, bitter, and lonely. So these are matters that Aaron must focus on before thinking about relationships. She wants all of the ladies to understand that they must shed their alternate identities and embrace their true selves. Living up to the world's expectations isn't okay, and it's okay to have emotions. So don't get upset when someone follows your dim light up your wattage. It's the second day, and Iyanla cordially invites the ladies to a high tea time. They even provide wardrobe accessories to choose from. There's a narration. Often career-driven women fear softness and vulnerability, two ingredients that are necessary for successful relationships. The seeds of sisterhood have been planted, and what better way to have those seeds and to water those seeds with the tea? Ladies, Let's talk about those relationships we were in, not knowing who we were. Crystal says, you know, my last relationship didn't work. And there were always people around me saying, Crystal can never stay in a relationship. So with the last one, I just felt like I had to prove them wrong. And I just tried really hard to make it work. Tracy says, I'm a runner. The minute things are great, I find some sort of excuse to argue and push that person away. Crystal also makes a note into saying, you know, I just don't respect somebody's authority sometimes. I mean, how can I follow a guy and you're not even where I am in life? You haven't even succeeded in areas that I've succeeded in. I mean, I just don't respect your leadership. And Iyama says, well, why would you sleep with them? It's the reality check for the women. They think that the physical relationship feels like love. Look, ladies, if you feel like all men are dogs, then why do you have a dog on your porch? What you allow and what they get, it ain't personal. It's what you're offering. Buying love is a sign of no self-worth. Crystal says, you know, me not having a father in my life was just really hard. And then he became more involved when I was about 12 years old. And everything I did, I did to just so my dad could see me doing well in school. I remember one summer I tried to get my skin all clear and straight A's and B's. And then when I got to college, I finished and it's just, it was never enough. I just feel like it was never enough for my dad. Erin says that her mom gave her that feeling like love was on her terms only. Iyala wants to know that since they're in the same industry, why isn't there more togetherness? They all agree and pitch in comments that businessmen put women against each other all the time. It's like every woman is your competition. So... Iyama wants them to make sure that they communicate. Communicate with your children so they understand that you're human, you're a woman, and you have emotions. Being in this manager role, Shanika explains, always had its difficulties. I would go through personal things in life, but I would still come to work having this idea or identity that I couldn't have any emotions. I always had to be strong because any sign of weakness is identifying that maybe I can't do my job in a male-dominated industry. My mom would be so manipulative and she had health issues, but she always had high expectations for me to always take care of her. And also, I was dealing with an atopic pregnancy. And Yala wants to know why she didn't reach out to anyone. But Erin says, yeah, she reached out to me and sent me a text that, hey, I was dealing with this. But then she says, I don't want to talk about it. They all share a laugh. They're not laughing at her terrible experience. They're laughing at the fact that they all understand that they've had to shut down their emotions and someone trying to help them for the sake of business. 
With the next exercise, they learned that when you wear masks and disguises, it's difficult to know how to maneuver and fit everything in your everyday lives, with your hearts, with your bodies. Place your feet flat on the floor and think, I am not my sister's keeper. I am my sister. I am her. What I see in my sister are the things that I see in myself. There's a reason why I'm speaking to you all collectively, because there are a lot of things similar in all of you. Look at each other without words and communicate through your eyes. When I was a little girl, what I saw was, what I heard was, what I needed was, Instead, what I got was, tell me about the first time you fell in love and someone broke your heart. Let your sister know how you feel. Let her know about your pain and I see your tears. Aaron says, what's on my heart is freedom. Pain I felt before and now it's being released. Crystal says, love, I'm holding back because I'm afraid of being hurt. I just want to be Crystal. Tracy says, every time you tell me to go to my young me, I burst into tears. I wasn't protected, so I had to fight. Now I feel relieved. You know what, Iyanla, Tracy says, I have something on my heart, but it's not pertaining to me. Can I share something? Shanika, you're holding back and you can't let go. You're holding it and I can see it in your eyes. I can see it in your face. Iyala wants Shanika to explain what she's heard her sister say and how it makes her feel that Tracy has said that. Shanika says, you know, I have a wall up and I understand. Tracy says, yeah, when I expressed how I felt, it was just like you stay guarded and made me feel like you don't trust me but I know you do trust me or you know what's going on I just don't think she trusts herself Shanika admits that it's hard for her to be vulnerable and and to really let that out and Yala instructs her to close her eyes and let her heart break and speak how old were you when it was broken She shares an unfortunate story of her being the age of four or five and being sexually abused. She didn't tell her mom because she was afraid that if she would tell her mother that it would hurt her very deeply. This experience is something that Iyala wants to work with her more individually. If you can't tell your story and release your pain, it will just stay stuck. What I want you all to communicate together as sisterhood is don't feel like you can't continue to communicate with one another. This is something that's okay to share. It's day three. Shanika had an emotional breakdown and allowed her sister to feel her pain. And now she needs the support in releasing this pain. Before they begin, Shanika is very late and thinks she has ADD. Niyala says, no, let's channel in and close your eyes and relax into this thought, into this moment. You know, Shanika, I struggled with lateness, the same things, the same ways, and it connected with that same trauma. If this is happening, make sure that It's not continuously to spill over into your life. Shanika says, yes, a teenage girl I was taken advantage of also. My cousin was abusing me and I just felt disgusting. She didn't tell her mom about that situation either because she was scared. And when she was younger, she got in trouble for being in the bushes with a boy. Yala explains that, you know, predators know how to stimulate And it confuses the mind and the body and makes you feel like that, has you believing that you're disgusting. But let me tell you that your body did not betray you and you're not disgusting. 
It's that feeling of being hurt and no one protecting her. But today, she can claim her body and reclaim her power. You can forgive your mother for not knowing your hurt. You don't have to carry her pain. Her pain has nothing to do with your pain. She's a strong person. You have to have that knowing to know that she has a higher forgiveness within herself. Tracy celebrates her 42nd birthday and it feels like a new rebirth. Tell me about not feeling protected. I know you mentioned that the other day, Tracy. Well, with my mom, the men that were in and out of my mother's house, it wouldn't make me feel safe. I mean, it seemed like every guy she dated, it was like, oh, now he lives with us now. I remember a point where one of the guys told me to do something and I caught a little attitude. He moved his body like he was about to hit me and even chased me around until I went to the top floor and my aunt threatened that she would hurt him and that he needed to stop immediately. My mother was nowhere to be found and from that point on, I felt that my aunt instead was my protector and that made me angry. Iyala learns that her mom is from the Caribbean. And Iyala explains that certain emotions and certain cultures, it's just culture. You've got to think how each generation learns certain things. In certain Caribbean culture, emotions aren't shown the same way. Think about the fluidity of where she's from. The Caribbean, then British rule, then slavery. Your mom didn't have a reference of how to communicate. Now it's up to Tracy and to understand how to create peace. So she has to make that decision and she has to put that into work. Aaron and Crystal reflect on their learnings. Aaron feels a little drained but understands it's due to the fact that she let go of a lot of sadness. But she feels relieved. Crystal understands that now her religious upbringing had a strong force of her feeling the pressures of trying to be perfect. Yan explains this is called the mother wound. Between the two women, Aaron, maybe that your wound is with your mom. And maybe, Crystal, you're unaware of what your wound is. Crystal always thought that she had to protect her mom and she can't allow fear to overtake her life. She has to understand that her mother has also needed to understand that she has pain. Sometimes parents don't understand what works and just because it didn't work for your parents doesn't mean it won't work for you. It's not about relationships. It's about learning to love yourself before you can love someone else. If these women expect their romantic lives to be different, they too have to be different. Change recognizes the issues that we have. It uproots and the causes. So we want to change that in the first place. The ladies know now their false identities aren't who they truly are, but false identities that protected them, that were defense mechanisms. Blocking out trauma, compromising, not taking accountability. In a relationship, the false identities are trusting in no one, being controlling, being combative. It's okay to be an alpha woman, Iyana explains. But remember to not go less than what you deserve. There's this stigma and expectation of black women that we all have to be strong all the time. And not being strong is a weakness, like it's a kryptonite. But we've been taught that our soft feminine side is a weakness, but it's not. Now it's time for a retirement party. It's time to release the false identities. The ladies, one by one, drop their wigs, symbolizing that what they won't do in the future is to take these false identities and who they are and then blending into a relationship. When you don't show up as who you are, people will fall in love with who you are not. In letting go, these women have a lot to gain. More importantly, they are gaining themselves. 
She wants the ladies to understand that whatever you go through in life, learn the lesson and move on. Don't settle there. And if the lesson returns, make sure that you study how you can do something different so you won't do the same things over and over again. Now, their new points and their new identities to take with them. Iyanla has recognized Crystal as the healer, not one who fixes people, but who guides. Tracy has the identity of warrior, not a fighter, but only in battle for honor. Shanika, the mentor, teacher and trainer, who aids others by teaching and demonstrating the feminine leadership, one who sets an example, guiding principal leadership. With Erin, it's the title of princess. It's okay to be young and let others guide you. She now has to learn how to develop her own passions and womanhood. She wants the women to make sure they have a list of guidance references. Whomever in your life has a positive influence and examples to view and build on, make sure that you do that. Black women have built this country on their backs. Women must pledge loyalty to each other. They all stand, hold hands, and recite. I will pray for you. You will pray for me. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I am not your keeper. I am you. The final narration from Iyanla. Who is a woman? What is it that makes her a woman? The life, the beauty, the love of the entire earth. Who is a woman? She's what she feels, what she sees, understands, embraces, and what she stands on and what she stands with and what she stands for. Who is a woman? She's everyone because all of us come from her. Thank you so much for watching. I love Iyanla Fix My Life. I love this series because even if things don't apply to you, I always take each episode as if it were a class to just see if there are things that I can apply into my life or things that I can share with others who haven't seen the show. This show applies to sisterhood and brotherhood because we can apply all of those things from what we've learned as a child, experiences that we've been through, and how are we bringing that to not only our relationships when it comes to work environment or friends, but romantic relationships. If none of those things apply to you, it's good to see characteristics and things in maybe someone else that someone else is displaying that they're unaware of. A good point when Miss Iyanla spoke with Tracy is mentioning the cultural effects of communication, how sometimes certain behaviors in certain cultures can affect the way that people communicate with one another and then that pass down from generation to generation to generation. I always say in every review of the Iyanla Van Zandt series is that Iyanla is not the fixer. She is the one who provides the tools to help people begin their journey with healing, to begin their process, giving them the study methods in order to help them receive their healing. That is who Iyanla is. That is her path and that is her ministry to help people and assist people in recognizing certain behaviors, how to stop those behaviors, improve, and if they keep reoccurring, to study what are you doing 
that keeps putting you in the same situations or keeps you having the same results. Um, it really it really saddens me that this is the last season of Iyanla Fix My Life. But as I've said in the other reviews that Iyanla make the decision that having production involved slows down a lot of the processes. She explained in a radio interview that there are so many steps in order to record and film everything when it comes to helping people with their healing. And she felt production got in the way of that because there's so many things legally that have to ensure when it comes to airing profits when it comes to making sure that somebody's not just trying to be on television but they're sincerely there for healing she said in this episode look this is not about television this is not about this or that this is for your healing and I need you to be present and I also need you to keep in mind that this is for people who can't come to me and talk to me so it's just very important I think she's just an awesome brilliant person and I'm just excited to see other things that she has planned looking at her fluidity now with social media and the platforms that she has I think she does have a channel on YouTube and also she shares certain clips on her website of different classes and different talks and and meditations that one can use in order to Uh, build better relationships and techniques to use and study books and all of these things and resources to help people understand ways to help them with mental illness, ways to understand how to break family generational habits. Um, And and she's just, she's just wonderful. I thought this, this, this episode was absolutely amazing. The second key point that I thought was absolutely beautiful and an eye-opener is that many women do unfortunately experience the having a dominant role, but at the same time look down upon when there's emotion, when there's the moment of being a human being. And it's like, well, you're supposed to be strong or you're a strong black woman or you're in this field. You know, it's this it's the famous quote from the Tom Hanks movie movie you know with Madonna and everybody when he says you know there's no crying in baseball you know kind of breeding into that concept of you're human like Iyanla said things that your mother went through forgive her because she wasn't equipped or wasn't aware of maybe those behaviors in front of you as a child so you have to learn how to forgive them and do your best moving forward in order to improve relationships because we can't stay angry and then we can't get upset at the things that we don't communicate to people and how it affects us and how it affects our lives because that's really really important it's a shame that in a lot of male dominated fields that it does seem as if they pit women against each other. And I love that Iyanla pointed out that we are one of the same. We're not keepers of each other, but we are one another. We do experience a lot of the same things. We do feel the same pains. And when you communicate and you build a sisterhood, when you build the brotherhood, when you build that 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 open line of communicating. I know Aaron said in the episode that wow, I was feeling for a moment I've shared all of this these these details about my life. Now I don't think we'll ever talk again. And Yana's just like, no, build that sisterhood with one another. Don't feel that way. Because this is this vulnerability we're trying to show. That you can let the wall down, you can let the guard down. They're they're they know of each other outside of this show so it's not like they're complete strangers on the show and telling strangers about their life experiences they are aware of each other and they don't know of each other not only in the industry but their specific realms of uh whether it's media mogul whether it's being a boss at the radio station whether they're a radio personality so they know of each other so i hope that they continue their sisterhood and continue to um, encourage one in, one another. So I, I thought it was a very insightful episode, and understanding that encouragement, loving, and being endearing, and also understanding that there are a lot of errors within yourself and you can't expect someone to fix that for you the last key point of my review before I close is that Iyala didn't hop into relationship when it comes to quote unquote why I can't find a man or quote unquote my relationship don't work what's wrong with him she went right into 
what can I do? And let me look into myself and do I even love myself? Because that's so important. We can't look for others to fix us or to make us happy. We have to have our happiness within ourselves. Therefore, when we do meet someone special and amazing, we can receive their love and we can receive them in understanding who they are. So that's really important. And she's also shared in other shows that when two broken people get married, it's going to be a broken marriage. And that's just so so important. I hope you guys enjoyed my full episode recap and review. Until next time, take care of yourself and each other. Make sure to check out other amazing full episode recaps and reviews on this playlist on this channel. I've listed a few links in the pinned comment and make sure that you check those out. In the meantime, I'll see you next time. Bye!